talking about the movie Ewoks Caravan of Courage. Uh, so being a Star Wars fan, by the way, happy May the 4th. Um, I was trying to figure out something that we could review on Star Wars Day for movie night. And I mean, I already reviewed all the mainstream movies, I already reviewed Clone Wars, I already reviewed the anthology stuff, and I even did the Christmas special. So I was trying to figure out what to do for you guys, and I realized I never saw the Ewoks movies. Uh, so there's two, there's Caravan of Courage, which we're reviewing today, and then there's also Battle for Endor, which if you guys like this video, let me know if you want me to review it basically right away, or if you want me to wait till the next May the 4th to review that one. But anyways, without further ado, let's get into the movie. So this is... feels like a made-for-TV movie. I don't know if it actually was. I didn't really research going into it. I wanted to be blind. Um, I will say, though, the acting in this is horrid from the human actors. So the Ewoks all do a good job. I mean, you can't really understand what they're saying because they're Ewoks. Um, <clears throat> which, I'm fine with that. But they also start learning basic, which is kind of weird for those of you who aren't Star Wars fan, basic is English. But uh, Wicket, the main Ewok, um, actually, I can do this. This Ewok right here, which is reviewed today also, make sure you check out that video, um, starts learning English, and so do the other ones. But uh, anyways, I do want to just premise this by saying the human acting is terrible. It's child actors for most part. Even the two adult actors in this were not that good. Uh, so the premise is that a family gets stranded on Endor at an undisclosed time period. Um, I did look it up. Apparently this is supposed to take place 150 years after Return of the Jedi. Which means Wicked is still somehow one of the younger Ewoks. Yet he's 150 years older than we last saw him. I headcanon. I like to pretend that this is actually like takes place during Empire Strikes Back. Um, I'm probably like... It doesn't matter. This isn't canon. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's kind of weird because it's like, um, it's supposed to take place in the future, but at the same time, nothing's changed. So we get to see other denizens of, um, like Endor in this. We get to see little fairy things, and we also get to see this giant monster at the beginning of the film where the parents are trying to look for their kids. They're literally just called mom and dad. They don't have actual names. Um, they're trying to look for their kids and all of a sudden this giant monster attacks. So we find out that the kids, which are Siddle and Mace, Mace, not Mace Windu, just Mace, um, are like basically stranded. We also get to see some Ewoks trying to look for their kids, and in doing that, they find Siddle and Mace. Mace gets strung up like Han Solo, while Siddle just gets to go back with the Ewoks, kind of paralleling that. And I did keep getting the vibe that uh, Mace looks like Luke, and he also is wearing basically Ezra's costume. So Ezra's costume was inspired by this character. Um, but basically, Siddle gets sick, so Mace and the Ewoks, including Wicket, have to get medicine for her to heal up. Um, Mace is always kind of a jerk to the Ewoks. He also has terrible line delivery in this. <laughs> like, there's like a part later on where a character passes away, and he's just like, You're gonna need your axe! And it's not like a sad, like, I'm trying to, like, root for you to come back. It's almost like, he says things so matter-of-factly. Like, not, not, like, the correct emotion. I don't want to say emotionless, because there's emotion. It's just not good delivery of the lines. Like the, you're gonna need your ex as the thing's dying. He said, you're gonna need your ex. Don't die! And it's like, the, no, it sounds like 
you're looking at your hermit crab that's been dead for two weeks. You're like, don't do that. You're gonna need your shell. I, I, I have a history of with that. Um, anyways, back to the actual video. Uh, so, we uh, see Mace kind of try to run away with Sid after this, or Siddle, and then they get trapped in a tree as another monster tries to attack. And then in the morning, the Ewoks go and fight the monster, and they find out that Mom and Dad are still alive. So they get together the Caravan of Courage. It's Wicket, Wicket's little brother, Whittle, um, some other characters. We get to see a cameo from Logre, um, and they all are given a specific item. Mace is given a rock, Siddle is given a stone, I believe, and Wicket is, or a crystal, and Wicket is given a staff. Um, they join the adventure. This is where they find like the little sparkling fairies. They also uh, capture one and befriend one, and then um, they recruit some other Ewoks. And we get to see the non forest parts of the forest moon of Endor. I thought that was weird. We get to see like a plains area, kind of a desert area, in the forest moon of Endor. Just kind of like. Something does seems off here, but in that they end up finding the cave of the giant monster uh, Where it's like a King Kong sort of looking monster. They all end up fighting it. They find the parents um, And it ends up killing one of the Ewoks. That's where we get the you're gonna need your axe. Why are you giving it to me? scene um, and after that, Mace throws the axe at the monster where it falls and perishes. And they decide to live with the Ewoks and it all live happily ever after. We do get a narration through the whole thing, I do want to mention really quick, by, I think it was Robert Ives is his name, but he is the snowman from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I did find that very distracting through the whole movie of like thinking of Rudolph as he was narrating the movie. The narration was needed because he was kind of translating some of the Ewokies that we get, uh, but also at the same time it was kind of not needed. I mean, what what's nice about Star Wars is you get characters speaking Huddies or Ewokies or Shriwook or something like that and you don't need um, subtitles the whole time and you, but like this was kind of like you kind of needed some sort of narration like it fixed it from the holiday special but at the same time it was just kind of jarring I guess I will give you guys a heads up the reason why I really kind of like summarized the ending kind of poorly is because this movie was very boring and I was passing out during watching it. Mind you, I was watching this at noon and I was literally sitting there like that. So the movie is definitely not made for the modern Star Wars audience in mind. Uh, there is a lot of world building in it, there's a lot of lore, a lot of character building, but it does feel kind of like a cash grab movie, I guess is the best way to say it. Everybody loved Ewoks. Well, not everybody, but Ewoks were the... It's like basically the best way to say it. They made a show of a bunch of Grogu. Like a bunch of Grogu's race. That's kind of what this felt like. Like, Ewoks are the cute little guys that all the kids liked back then. So let's go ahead and make a whole show about Ewoks. Let's make a whole movie. I am going to review the Ewoks show eventually, but yeah, I wanted to start with the movies first. So in all honesty, I do have to give this a 5 out of 10. I hope Battle of Endor is better. But yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you leave a like. Make sure you leave a comment, subscribe, ring that bell. Happy May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. It's that nerd Ryan signing off. Thank you.